Now we're going to venture into neuropeptides. And neuropeptides, there are quite a few of them on uh, our list of presentations. So I'm going to start with Isis and, and Lelena's presentation of encephalins and endorphins. So remember that peptides are, are a fairly short string of amino acids that are um, bound together by peptide bonds, and they can act in, in the central nervous system as neurotransmitters, um, and also in the peripheral, anywhere they're acting on nerves. Um, but they also act as hormones in other places. So we'll start with the opioids, which are these two that are just mentioned. And they're called opi opioids because they mimic what we know opioid drugs do, um, which are things like morphine. So they're painkillers. Um, and let's take a look at a couple of them here. So opioids um, the encephalins are neuromodulators. And that's probably true of most of these neuropeptides that we're talking about. In other words, they, they act on the neurons that are being activated, perhaps by glutamate, um, or perhaps by GABA or other things, and their, their effects are to um, modulate or change the activity of those neurons. So the type that um, are involved here are very often neurons that are kind of these shorter neurons. They have short axons, and they're, they act very close to where the activity is happening where that, um, um, and where that area of synthesis is. So we looked at the MET and encephal, um, encephalons, and METs are just the ones, the encephalons, which are made primarily, they have this key amino acid methionine, or the LU amino acids, which have this key amino acid, or LU encephalons which have this key amino acid, uh, leucine. Um, they will act as both hormones, they can act as neuromodulators, and they're produced in a variety of areas, including um, the adrenal glands, which are located on top of the, the kidneys um, in, the, in the peripheral nervous system, and also there's release by the pituitary gland. So what they do mainly, as as you would think an opioid might do, is they act as an analgesic. So um, analgesia means some, is, is to reduce pain. And so what they do is they reduce pain by slowing down or reducing the firing rates of some of the target pain neurons. And I'll show you this a little bit coming up. We're going to talk about pain in more detail. But they also can be found in the, in the brain, in the limbic system, in limbic areas. And they are thought to have some um, involvement with how emotional response to pain takes place. They're interestingly also involved with the gut. So, so there's a lot um, on this gut-brain connection too. So we'll talk a little bit more about that coming up. But they're involved in this case with the breakdown of proteins. And they have um, three main types of receptors called mu, delta, and kappa, and they're found all over the body. Endorphins, again, are opioids as well. Um, they also act by inhibition, and they're produced in the hypothalamus and released by the pituitary. Uh, they are classified into uh, by their the number of amino acids in their chains, because they're peptides. So there's alpha, beta, and gamma, and you can see the number of amino acids in each of those. Um, and along with those encephalins, they basically go to areas that have opioid receptors, and they're going to neuromodulate. So they're going to inhibit or modify other things within pain pathways. So very, very important. Now speaking of pain, so we had Katrina's presentation on substance P, which is also a neuropeptide made of 11 amino acids. And it's produced um, in a variety of places. Um, it's produced in the, from the immune system cells. And it's also produced from some of the cell bodies in the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is a really important ner uh, nerve. And when we say nerve, what we mean is it's like a collection of neurons. It's a large body of um, neurons that are moving in the same direction. Um, in this case, there, the vagus nerve connects with the central nervous system in the brain and connects with all sorts of other areas, including the heart and, and parts of the peripheral nervous system. 
Um, substance P is pro-inflammatory. And what that really means is it's going to release um, the, uh, it's going to release, be released in response to uh, you get injured and so you get some swelling that occurs. Um, and what it does is it helps to bring a lot of fluids into the area, a lot of the immune system um, fluids coming in to start to repair, or protect an area, destroy invaders. So it's, it's um, involvement with pain is that it's going to increase um, fluid um, coming into an area during an injury. So that's what we mean by pro, meaning positively inflammatory. So it, as a, as a, um, in opposition to anti-inflammatory. So you know what it, uh, certain drugs we take like Advil, some of those um, products are anti-inflammatory. So they're trying to reduce this effect. Now, here's a, something that I thought would be really interesting to look at. So here, when we see... Um, we see substance P, we just talked about it being involved with pain response. And then we have the endorphins, which include the encephalon. So we have the release of endorphins onto this neuron, and it's getting, these endorphins are getting picked up by these opioid, or opiate receptors. And what in this case it's trying to do is reduce the release of substance P um, from this neuron, and that release of substance P, therefore, is going to sort of block um, the, the activity in the postsynaptic neuron that would transmit some of that information of pain. So that's a, um, a one way to look at this. So here's the substance P receptor on this side, um, and because of this activity of the endorphins and encephalons, it's going to reduce that that um, release of substance P, um, which then you know, helps to take away some of the feelings of pain. Now I said I'll go into pain processing later, but and some of this is kind of noisy, but just to kind of show you um, what we're talking about. So right here would be a nerve ending. So this could be a nerve ending that happens to be in your toe, and you step on a tack or something, and this is a pain receptor. So no C means is having to do with pain. So no susceptors are pain receptors. And that pain then is going to, this neuron is going to have an action potential. It's going to go through this. This is called the dorsal root ganglion. It's going to take that information into the spinal cord. So this is a cross section of the spinal cord. And the spinal cord then is going to send that information, actually crosses over, and send that information up to the brain via this pathway. And so this is kind of the basic setup for the transmission of information that is from, from some type of a pain um, perception that you have, some event that stimulates the pain receptors and then sends that information from that location, at least this is part of the story, up to the brain. And so this down here, if you can kind of look at this, you can see that substance P's role is right here. Um, it's involved here. It's going to have some effect on this neuron um, here's, uh, that is normally going to be activated by glutamate um, and is going to have some effect on the transmission of, 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 sorry, the substance P is going to be released in this area. But then we also have the opioid receptors over here that are picking up some of that information here and changing the amount of activity going on in this synaptic region. So I will talk about this later on. You don't need to worry too much about it, but it's interesting to see how pain um, can come into from the peripheral nerve endings into the spinal cord and go on up. And then what is it that's going to um, affect that transmission? Um, so that is pain processing in very brief, and that uh, will conclude this mini tour of those three neurotransmitters.